Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today we want to cover one of the most important audio analysis tools inside of Studio One, which is the spectrometer. So why is the spectrometer so important? Well, if you're not sitting in the ideal room with the ideal speakers at all times, there might be some critical problems in your mix that you're not really hearing, for example, in the sub-sub frequency spectrum that would really come to bite you once you play this on a big system in a club, for instance. Um, but there's many other reasons as well. Uh, let's say there's a certain ringing that you just can't track down by ear, then it's great to have the spectrometer in place that just helps you to spot it visually and then you can treat the problem from there. There's so many applications, I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ones today and run you through all the functions. The spectrometer can be inserted as an effect, just like any other Studio One effect from the browser. You just find the spectrometer inside of your effects browser and then you drag and drop it onto your desired channel. In my case, it's going to be the master bus. Then you can just hit play here. And at a very basic level on this X axis here, you get frequencies from low to high. And on the Y axis, you get level or amplitude, low to high. So this is kind of like a representation of the frequency balance of your song. Right off the bat, the first thing you probably notice about the spectrometer are the different analysis modes that you can select here from the bottom. By default, the octave mode is selected. That means you get one band per octave in the analyzer. This is very broad, of course, but for a general overview, it's quite useful. I really like this mode, particularly when using the micro view of the plugin. So without having to open it up, you can just show it in your mixer console and with a left click, you get this little preview. And if you have the octave mode selected there, I find that works really well. If you need a bit more detail than that, then maybe consider the next mode, which is third octave mode. This gives you, as the name suggests, three bands per octave. So you may consider this the sweet spot if you're looking for something that gives you an accurate representation of the musical balance in your mix while still not being all too finicky with too many bands, especially when the plugin is not maximized. Then next to that, we have what's arguably the most musical of all the spectrometer modes. This is the 12 octave mode where the bands are separated into the 12 individual semitones of an octave. This is fantastic because it allows you to correlate these arbitrary frequencies to an actual note pitch. And that really helps when finding ringing instruments, for example. If you need to narrow down a problem in a specific frequency range and it's more finely than just the semitones of an octave, then maybe the FFT mode right next to the 12 octave mode is for you because that shows you the frequency content at a much higher resolution. You can actually uh, select your own window size here and you can also limit the frequency range by using the boxes right here in the bottom right. You can also set the level range. This is true for all of the spectrum modes, by the way. And if you left click and drag, you can also scale the plugin with your mouse, which increases or decreases the displayed resolution. Next to the FFT, we also have the FFT curve mode available that performs the same kind of analysis that the FFT does, but displays the result as a single blue line, which is easier to read in some situations. We even have a waterfall and sonogram if you need that available inside of the spectrometer. So even for the most demanding tasks such as audio restoration, you are covered. The final mode and my favorite actually is the segments mode. I'll show you how I use that in my day to day productions in just a moment here. I also want to mention that you have the channels menu here. So this allows you to monitor just the left channel, the right channel, the sum of left and right channels, or just the difference between left and right channels, the sides can be very useful at times, because if you have L minus R selected and you see some ringing there that doesn't show up in L plus R, then you know that there's a certain problematic frequency only on the sides. And then you can use like an MS EQ or something like that to get rid of the problem without affecting the mids. To round things up, the spectrometer also has a sidechain input available. To enable that, just click on the sidechain button here and then you can bring in a second spectrum from another channel so you can compare that to the frequency response of the channel that the spectrometer is actually inserted and that's great for AB mixing with the reference track, for instance. Okay, so here's an example of how I like to use the spectrometer in my daily work. 
I have the spectrometer inserted yet again on the master bus. And now I'm just gonna hit play in this uh, chorus section over here. And my favorite way to monitor the main out is the segments mode. I just find that particularly nice to look at. Very clear, can select the height for each of these bars of either half a decibel, an entire decibel or two decibels. I can also set a hold. So if I let the entire song run through this way, I get an accurate representation of the entire frequency curve. And then I can see that there's perhaps a little bit of a dip here. I mean, that's kind of normal in electronic music to have, you know, a bump where the bass is and then it kind of tapers off. But here in that low mid frequency range of around, um, you know, 300 Hertz, maybe I see that there's a bit too much of a dip. So maybe I can use an EQ to boost that a little bit more. Same goes for that section between 2K and 5 kilohertz, the upper mid range, if you will. And then there's also a lot of low frequency energy, as you can see here, way below 50 Hertz, which doesn't contain any musical information as such, because this is way below the fundamental octave of your song. These frequencies that we can't even hear on most sound systems take up a significant amount of a headroom in the main bus. So we might want to consider cutting some of that out. That can be done with the Pro EQ that I have sitting in front of the spectrometer. Actually, let me go ahead and just pin the spectrometer so that we can open up the Pro Pro EQ at the same time. And now let me just, uh, you know, hit play here, engage my EQ, turn on that low cut that we were talking about. Not too much, of course, otherwise you can see now I killed the entire low end of my song, maybe around 30 hertz or something like that. Engage the boost for the low mid frequencies. get some high mid frequencies in there and maybe a little bit of top end. And if I just bypass that, that already seems a lot closer to what I'm getting at. So hopefully these examples were able to show you how useful the spectrum meter can be. Of course, you shouldn't base all of your mixing decisions on the spectrum meter. Your ears are still the best reference, but sometimes it's just very useful to double check visually just to be on the safe side. Thank you for watching.